Hello subscribers, welcome to a live screen stream of Forteverse. We're going to be looking through some races and vocations. I'm going to be talking about them. And we're going to log in and do some testing with them. So that's the plan tonight. Anybody's interested in asking questions or making comments, please do so in the chat. I will try to answer anything I can. Okay, so this is uh, an RPG I've been working on for a few years now. And thanks to artificial intelligence art creation, I'm going to have a lot more graphics than I plan on having. All static, uh, except for animations during combat on the mini-map and those types of things. But uh, anyway, we're going to go through some races and locations and just talk about them. So, I'm at Forteverse.com. That's my website. And here you can see there's a big list of races, big list of vocations. I do have pictures and explanations of on all of these. Uh, so, what I'll probably do is go through the races. Some of the races that are a little bit different than typical ones. And then we'll go through maybe all the vocations, but I might do that in-game uh, because I give descriptions of them there anyway. Okay, so ant men, of course, are men ant humanoids. So they're really strong, and what's interesting about them is they get a large carrying capacity boost. So if you have at least one of these in your party, but I mean, you can have multiples. Uh, they, they can drastically increase the amount of weight that can be carried. And the way encumbrance works is if a party member has equipment on themselves, then the encumbrance is just for that party member. However, you can actually take any item and put it into what's called the party inventory. And from there, it's shared across all party members that are active, you know, not unconscious or whatever. So, uh, in fact, you know what, let me log in here. We can kind of take a look at that at the same time. We'll just create a party member just so I can show you. Let me delete it. I'll just create a brand new one. Hey, Higher Ground Gaming, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Good to see you. Are you streaming at 10 p.m. tonight? Okay, so let's create just... I have an option here for random party member creation so that I don't have to do anything and it'll just automatically pick for me. So it did a pixie trickster. Okay, so... This is the equipment on the party member themselves. And you can see it shows weight on some of this stuff. Uh, so it's only encumbered on that character. If we go look at party items, uh, this is a list that will appear and show you know, all the weight carried across everyone. So uh, you can see with this... <laughs> Since I only have one party member, the total party encumbrance is, is 30 because he's pretty weak. But he's not carrying much. So we're good there. Okay, so let me flip back to this. Uh, wait a minute, you're not even seeing this. Hold on. I wonder why... Let me look at OBS here. I wonder why it won't show. Let me try to add another one. It's only showing the first one. There we go. this down okay it's 
hide that. Okay, so when I was blabbing, this is what I was trying to talk about here. This shows the list of all of our equipment, and you can see there's weights associated with, with everything. And this pixie's carrying that. If we go over to the party items, there isn't anything listed yet, which it will. Uh, I'll, I'll demonstrate that later. But that's what gets shared. So anyway, the ant men can really help share party member items weights. That's all I was trying to say there. So let me flip back and see if this shows up. And it doesn't. I'm going to have to move it up like this. <laughs> Every time I flip back and forth, I'm going to have to remember to tell OBS to go over to the other one. Unless, maybe I can do a tab here. Hold on. Let me try something. Man, I don't know why that bookmark thing shows up there. It shouldn't. So let's copy this, paste it over here. Let's see if you can see... Okay, cool. That'll work. We'll just use tabs then. Close this one. We'll log in. We're not ready to enter the arena. We're going to end up creating some more here. Okay, so that's that. Ah, you're doing well. Higher Ground Gaming, nice. Yeah, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. So let's go back and take a look at the next one. Badger lane. Okay, so badger lanes are just kind of tough creatures. They're pretty strong, too. Uh, <laughs> as I described here, they're not very smart. They don't have much empathy, and they're not very perceptive. They have a lot of confidence. And confidence uh, affects a lot. It basically affects every skill and everything you try to do. Uh, and they have a lot of vitality and willpower too. And they're highly poison resistant. Anybody that knows a, a badger, like a honey badger, can get stung by like hundreds of bees and it'll just fall on the ground and let itself kind of go into a paralyzed coma almost, just so it can deal with the poison. And then it'll just wake up, you know, a half hour later or whatever and <laughs> be going. So they're really interesting creatures. So uh, badger lane is humanoid badger lane, of course. Um, and I should say that when you create characters, they have to be a humanoid of some kind. Now, once you've created the party, you can get into your party monsters. You know, I was a huge fan of that in Bard's Tale. So you, you can get any kind of monsters. You can summon any kind of monsters. But your player characters that you control directly have to be humanoids. But there's all kinds of different ones. Okay, so that's the Badgerling. Uh, Batkin, those are bat humanoids. Uh, they're pretty, they're weak and they're really ugly, but um, higher than average speed and agility, great endurance and very high perception. They're immune to light and blind effects. It's obviously, they don't have eyes to, to deal with that. Uh, they are actually weak to sound waves though because their their hearing is so sensitive they can take extra effects from sound waves um there is i have different types of perception in the game there's hearing smelling and vision and hearing can actually go farther in general than vision but it doesn't tell you necessarily what it is exactly you can just hear something and the, and the game will warn you, you know, that you hear something shuffling about, you know, in the distance or whatever. But you don't necessarily know what it is. Uh, but uh, batkins are good from that perspective. Bee cans are bees and humanoids. And they actually have a special attack they can do uh, with a stinger that can cause paralysis and a small amount of damage too. We all know what bugbears are from Dungeons and Dragons. That's kind of what those are. Drakens, they can breathe. Now, the interesting thing about 
dragons are uh, they breathe acid, most of them, but there are some that can breathe fire too in my game. So uh, the picture here is one that's breathing fire. But uh, th So basically they can get a special attack when they're created. A small chance that it'll breathe fire instead of acid. But uh, they also have pretty good scales, so they have some natural armor. I'll pass the ones that we're all kind of familiar with, dwarf selves and things like that. Uh, foxling, fox humanoids. Uh, they're they're immune to magical effects that cause clumsiness, and uh, they're not very tough and weak, but they're really quick at high dexterity. Airground Gaming says Adam answered my question on the whirlpool and teleporting. Ah, he's talking about realms of antiquity. It seems the area is unreachable, so the quest item can't be where I thought it was. Ah, okay. You're going to mention that in your stream tonight. Cool. Yeah, Adam's great. He's the creator of Realms of Antiquity. So he, he gives great, great advice and hints when someone asks. Hey, Mr. Spock, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? He says, impressive number of races and classes. Well, thank you. Yeah, I love variety in games so that you can just have all kinds of combinations, especially since uh, this game you can actually hire outside your party as well, get hirelings and things. And if you're evoker, you can get multiple summons and things like that. So I just love having variety, giving the player a lot more options. All right, Frogling. So obviously part frogs, um, they have actually natural antifreeze, so they're resistant to freezing effects and suffocation. Uh, they're <laughs> they're ugly, not very strong, a little less tough than average human, but they're quick and agile. So one thing I'll mention is about charisma and your appearance. When you go into shops or you're trading or trying to talk with someone the whole party's charisma comes into effect. So the person doing the speaking has the most impact, but um, the way I wanted to make it is that this game's a lot more like tabletop or in where there's all kinds of factors and dimensions to it. So, you know, if, if you have a gorgeous elf talking to someone, but then behind that elf is a giant troll, ugly, mean, ruthless looking troll you know no matter how good looking and attractive that elf is the person is going to be intimidated you know they're they're going to kind of back off a little bit so if you mix in some ugly creatures with your party it will have an impact on everything uh and the alternative is true if you put a bunch of just all high charisma uh, characters in your party then that'll have a much bigger impact on on your uh, parlaying with not only shopkeepers, but just people that you want help from or, or quests or whatever it is. Hey, Sastam, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Oh, glad you're doing good, Mr. Spock. Inspired by the creativity you're putting into this. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we all know what gnolls, gnomes, goblins... Uh, probably not Gorids. Most of you probably don't know what those are. So Gorid is kind of like an ape man. Um, they're, I mean, gorillas are pretty smart. You know, apes are pretty smart. Not nearly as smart as humans. But this is kind of a weird mutated ape humanoid. So they're pretty smart, even though they're really strong. Uh, they do lack speed and agility and dexterity. And of course, they have a slight cold resistance because they have fur. And they're completely immune to weakness effects. So that's their claim to fame. I did go with Halfling instead of Hobbit for the uh, character class, the, the shorter ones. Okay, let's see. Anything we need to talk about on these? They have high dexterity and charisma. Uh, they have extremely high agility, initiative, and speed to dodge attacks. 
and they're also very creative. I have all kinds of attributes, uh, but creativity is one that can impact certain spells or like bards that come up with songs during combat or whatever, you know, creativity impacts all that kind of stuff. Uh, let's see. They're resistant to slow effects and ensnaring. The best way to deal with them is to hit them with an area of effect spell uh, or attack so that they can't dodge. So uh, <laughs> one of my, Christopher, you guys, Christopher Robin, a lot of you guys know him. He was doing a lot of testing for me and he was using dwarves. He, he created a bunch of dwarves and would go into the arena and the dwarves were doing really well, but then he would get into fights with like halfling ninjas or pixie ninjas. And they would wipe out his whole <laughs> his whole party of dwarves. And it's because their dodge is so high, he wasn't able to hit them. And they would just dance around and, you know, slice them up. Now, they have low hit points because they're so small. So, like a wizard or somebody that had an area of effect spell could take them out real easily. Because you can't dodge, in my game, you can't dodge an explosion. <laughs> if you're in the middle of it, you're hit by it and you're dead. There's all kinds of things like that where certain things can be really strong against certain combinations and then really weak against others. So sometimes it pays to have a balanced party that can do different types of things. Uh, but that was just one interesting story I wanted to talk about. Glad you're doing good, Sastam. That's great. Yeah, exactly, Mr. Spock. Dexterity and agility versus brute strength. Okay, now this this is a very interesting race that I looked up online that I, I decided to create in my game. These are kind of from mythology. Haltijas, I guess, is or Haltijas. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Are highly spiritual, gnomish-looking characters. They're great protectors because it's in their nature. So in addition to high spirituality, they also are very empathetic. Their disadvantage is their low speed. They're also less agile and strong than humans. They're immune to discouraged charm and hypnosis and highly resistant to insanity and mental afflictions. So they make really good healers or um, thaumaturgists that, that buff your party and things of that nature. Let's see what else. Hawkites. So these are hawk men. They're just really quick and agile. Uh, they're excellent at staying focused. So if you try to cast like distraction spells on them or something, that's not going to work. Uh, Cap Ray. So these are interesting. These are uh, another kind of mythological creature. There are tall, muscular, hairy creatures that emit a nauseating odor. So these, wherever they go, emit this odor around them it's an aura and any enemy has a chance of kind of becoming nauseated or uh, choking <laughs> think of it as like kind of a permanent stinking cloud walking around it uh, obviously that really impacts their charisma and it's bad when you're trying to communicate with someone when you have these in your party because it's obviously a turn off having this horrible stench around everywhere they go uh, but they have excellent strength and toughness. Uh, and it, it made a little comment here. The gods don't like them very much because they lack spirituality and empathy, though. Mr. Spock says, I think I went to school with some Capris. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, we know what kobolds are. Mantis. So these are uh, mantis humanoids. Uh, they're very very agile and fast and they're very strong and tough as well so these are like killing machines uh, they suffer from very low intelligence wisdom and anything related to the mind they're also very ugly they make excellent melee and ranged killing machines they're also fairly resistant to paralysis weakness and slowness we know what minotaurs are they're um Really tough, and they're actually really smart, too. Uh, but they're slow and very ugly. 
and they also lack endurance, as well as empathy and spirituality. And let's see, Mongoosian. So these are mongoose men. Extreme agility and initiative. They're very dexterous and quick. They're very weak, however, so, you know, they can't carry heavy stuff. Uh, and I just made a comment here. They can be thought of as death by a thousand cuts in battle. And they're immune to poison. We know what ogres are. Oni. So they're thought of as demon ogres by appearance only. They're not really demons. Uh, they're very much like an ogre. and they But they have horns growing out of their head. They aren't as strong as ogres, but they're still really strong. And they're slightly better with almost every attribute compared to an ogre, except strength. And they're immune to anxiety. And they have fear resistance. Okay, let's see. Pixies. So, they're a type of fairy, but they can't fly. They're really intelligent, fast, and dexterous, but they're extremely weak, and they lack endurance. Uh, they have mild resistance to silence, large resistance to irritation, and they're immune to slow and sleep effect. Oh, and that's one other thing I'd say in my about my game is um, you can make any race be any vocation, but you could have... You could actually start below level one if you don't meet the minimum requirements. Let me show you that. Let's create like a troll wizard, for example. Trolly. Troll. Wizard. You can see here I give a synergy rating. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember Sir Percival. He was on YouTube uh, a long time ago. He he came up with this idea. I thought it was a great idea, so I implemented it. So, Troll Wizard's a horrible combination, but you can do it. Uh, it's showing that we're low on intelligence, creativity, and wisdom. So let's go ahead and create them. We'll use simple-minded verbiage. Uh -huh. So as you can see, <laughs> normally you have about 100 points to assign. We actually have minus 125. When you're uh, low on something, it really eats into the points. It cuts down your points a lot. So he was so low that we're, we're really behind. And this will carry on with how much of a deficit you have when you start the game. So I can't change anything here because I'm at such a negative. And then it spills over to the skill points, too. Now we're minus 110. No chance of assigning anything here. So it says party member created. Member will be penalized with two level zero with minus 11,000 experience points. So he's basically like almost level minus one. But you can do it if you want to. And if you get him high enough level, you can actually finally have... A troll wizard that can do something <laughs> but uh, right now this guy is gonna be pretty much useless and I'll just I'll just attack with weapons won't be able to cast any spells or anything mr. Spock says I like the ability to make poor pairing sometimes that adds flavor to the story yes and you can class change too so I don't know why you'd want to do it but you could you could start as a fighter and then Later on, switch them over to a wizard or, you know, whatever. Okay, so let's go back here. Can I talk about the Radkin yet? Let's see. They're immune to disease. Let's see here. Salamander. So these guys actually have an aura kind of like the Capre. Only theirs is a heat aura that that does damage to anything that gets too close to it. I think I talk about it somewhere. Let's see. 
Yeah, they can exude flames from their bodies for a limited uh, point of time. But it does use stamina, whereas the cap rays is perpetual and they don't have to use stamina. They're extremely resistant to heat and they're immune to fire damage. They're vulnerable to cold. Since they have scales, they have a little bit of natural armor. Uh, as far as attributes, slightly stronger than humans, but less agile, dexterous, and wise. This biggest disadvantage is they're very ugly. Okay. Scorp. These are scorpion humanoids. So, slightly less able than most attributes than humans, but they have extreme constitution, they're resistant to poison and caustic chemicals, and have a good natural base armor. Uh, they do well on the front lines when absorbing damage, but not so well in social situations. Really bad charisma. Uh, they do have the ability to poison an enemy with their tail. However, as you can see here, this giant tail coming out, they cannot equip armor on their trunks, their hips, unless it's specially created for them. Because obviously that thing gets in the way. So you could wear like greaves and separate plates up here, but nothing on the hip. So if you try wearing pants, it's not going to work because... That would cover the hips and go down or like some kind of tunic that covers the pants or a robe this thing will get in the way mr spock says are cap rays immune to each other same question for salamanders um yes yes they are the the flames that come out from the salamanders is is fire damage, and salamanders are immune to that. They're not immune to heat damage, which is something different. Heat damage is more generic. I can probably show that. We'll go over to the resistance chart here. Okay, so... Where is he? Okay. You have temperature. Uh, all the resistances in this game are hierarchical. So temperature falls under... Well, let me just highlight it up. Then we can see. Physical. Is it under physical? Yeah. Right here. And then physical is under energy. So... The salamanders have fire resistance of 100%, but heat, I don't know if it's 75%, I don't know what it is. So, um, like there's difference between something burning and something taking fire itself. Burning essentially means it, it can combust, whereas fire means, and you know, and, and then it would catch on fire itself and burn. Whereas fire is just straight damage that is caused physically based on fire so heat may be like a cloud that is just baking something but since the salamander shoots flames it's immune and then the cap ray i'm not sure what that would fall under let me look at nausea so nausea is a normally a circulatory system affliction which is a physical affliction. So they're going to have nausea resistance or immunity. So they won't be impacted by that. Hey there, Toll. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Uh, it's, it's a lot more than a text RPG. Uh, some of it is text, but there, there is graphics and stuff to it. Yeah, it, it, it's a ton of resistances. I wanted to make it as accurate as possible with like physics and reality. So like you can see energy, a lot is under energy, but there is some ones down here that are separate categories. I separate them by this bar. There is a magical hierarchy and then there's a spiritual hierarchy. So resistances under spiritual are death, destroy, level drain, possession, a spiritual affliction and a spiritual force. 
magic has different magical afflictions, like if asphyxiation, curse, device malfunction, just weird things that are kind of voodoo-like, uh, magical force, mana force. But almost everything is energy-based and physical in nature. Uh, but like you can find things like you could find an item that boosts mental resistance and if you did then you automatically get the boost on these as well because they're in the, the same hierarchy uh, alternatively you know sometimes you may just have an immunity or a resistance at a lower level uh, in this case silence 20 percent, and then under this unconsciousness immune to sleep and what is this, a pixie? Yeah, this is the pixie I'm looking at. Okay, so back to the scorp. Can't talk about that. Snake man. Toll says, like dark sun shattered lands. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't read your comment until now. <laughs> if you give me a little context, maybe I can answer that. Hey, Kane, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? So snake men or women are part human, part snake. Very ugly. Uh, less intelligent than humans and not spiritual, but they're very agile and fairly strong compared to humans. Decent poison resistance. They also have poisonous attack, their bite. The poison isn't as potent as a scorps, but it lasts longer. Uh, they don't have the armor like scorps either. Uh, sprite now sprites are flying picks uh, berries um, so they can hover over the ground so they can't be hurt by pits lava or something like that uh, they're very intelligent dexterous extremely quick and agile their initiative creativity and charisma are also super high they have subhuman vitality although higher than pixies and they're extremely weak lack endurance and sprites have a uh, respectable resistance to magic force attacks. Kane says, any gameplay yet? No, I will. We're going to create a party and we're going to... Uh, I have my arena active while I work on the main game and create the world, the game world. Uh, so we'll do fights. We're going to do a bunch of fights tonight. Mr. Spock says, I compared your game to the gold box games. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Yes, yes, Toll, I'm making this. Um, so compared to the gold box games... I'm not sure how to compare it to that. Uh, you're going to see it's a lot different than, than most games. It's going to be very, very different. It is real-time phased combat where five seconds go by. So you make all your decisions, and then five seconds go by, and then it all happens in the five seconds, and that's one round. Then the next round comes about. That's combat. You can turn turn that off and just do straight real-time. And you can also tell the computer to take control, which is what we're going to do tonight. We're going to have the computer control my party and fight uh, the, the other computer-generated monsters. Uh, and I may manually control some just to kind of show you how that works. Okay, so then we have Tigra. So these are tiger humanoids. Very agile and quick. They're great at climbing. Uh, let's see, they can attack enemies with claws if they're unarmed. Slight cold resistance, fairly resistant slow effects. They do have a vulnerability to light because they have good vision. Uh, they also have low empathy and lower than average willpower. Treants, these are just uh, slow, very strong, very high vitality and strength and extremely slow and clumsy terrible charisma but they actually have pretty good spirituality Let's see they're immune to limb injuries 
they can't uh, you can't make them bleed so samurai samurai is what's called a slicing attack where they can slice something over them cause it to bleed and the uh circulatory system will take damage over time can't happen with the trant can't suffocate them and you can't have circulatory system afflictions they have some natural armor toward crushing cutting and piercing attacks trunky so these are uh basically elephant humanoids uh, let's see they have high hit points of course very tough and wise uh, they lack endurance confidence speed and agility oh it's commercial time i'll wait a minute here <laughs> I'll read uh, Toll's comment in a second here. Someone let me know when the commercials are over. <laughs> are the commercials over? I can't tell. I don't get to see the commercials. I just get a warning. Okay, I'll assume they're over, the commercials. Um, so Toll says, let's start with a party of five Scorp diplomats and one elf barbarian. That should go over well. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Spock says, yeah, gameplay is different, but I just meant look-wise. Ah, okay. You, you see a gold box influence with the look. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. So it's funny you say that, Toll, about the Elf Barbarian, for example. I've made the artificial intelligence that when the computer controls your party, it d makes better decisions based on your intelligence, wisdom, logic attributes, things like that. So if you have very low intelligence, wisdom, and that on a fighter, and you let the computer control it, it's not going to make good decisions. It's almost like they will just kind of be in a rage and not necessarily attack the one that they should be attacking. And um, so having intelligent fighters can actually really turn out well for you. So I've tried to make all attributes uh, useful in some way. Yeah, the Twitch ad. Sorry about that, Kane. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to get this. We're going to actually uh, do some fights here in a second. Uh, let's see. So this is a turtle humanoid. Obviously going to be very slow, but they have very high endurance and slightly higher strength than humans. High constitution, vitality, and willpower. They're immune to slow. They're already so slow and highly resistant to caustic effect. Let's see. Warg. These are kind of like wolfmen, I'd call them that. Uh, I didn't want a werewolf because I didn't want one that... There there are werewolves in the world, but I didn't want you to be able to be a werewolf where you switch back and forth and stuff. And so these are just always wolf humanoids. And then the Yaksha. yaksha. So these are intelligent, wise, empathetic, and spiritual beings. Not as strong, fast, or agile, or dexterous as humans. They're immune to hallucination and have minor resistance to electrical. Okay, I'm not going to go through all the vocations here. Uh, we'll, we might talk about some later, but let's let's go ahead and actually finish creating our party. I'm going to do completely random with the computer doing this, and we'll let some fights happen and see how poorly our random ones do. So it looks like we got a badger lean thief. We got an elf samurai. That's actually not bad. A ratkin knight. <laughs> that's 
That's a pretty bad combo there. A dwarf druid. Eh, it's okay. Kane says, so they'll act the AI in every Fire Emblem game except FE4 and 5? <laughs> Oh, thanks, Mr. Spock. Um, I used to play pen and paper D&D cane, yes. Um, and I created my own system when I was in high school, and we played that. I was the game master. Uh, but I've been actually playing online uh, with Christopher Robin. I had mentioned him. He's been having a uh, dungeon crawler classic he's been doing as the dungeon master, so I've been doing that too. But I don't have much time to do that kind of stuff, so we can only do it once a week. Or, I'm sorry, once every other week for two hours. <laughs> That's all I could dedicate. Okay, we're going to enter the arena. I'm going to do easy, and we're probably still going to get killed here. We'll still have some deaths. Does anyone else see that? Because my perfect vision does. And that's one of my voice actors, Jared. <laughs> uh, let's see, who was that that saw it? So the elf samurai, that was his voice. Okay, I'm gonna enable computer control here. Okay. Very last. So we can see these little uh, bars here mean the characters are busy doing something and the computer's doing a say hostility. So the computer is looking around trying to figure out what it's gonna do. I have it in combat mode, so you get so much time to make all your decisions. Now, that's why it's paused right now. We're not in real time. Uh, when we're ready to go, we'll just click this, and then combat's going to start. So let's see what we're dealing with here. Looks like we're, we're fighting an elf priest, Mongoosian merchant, a null bard, ogre miner, a <laughs> foxling diplomat. <laughs> Since we're fighting on easy... I make the computer generate any kind of combination, so it could be terrible for fighting. And that, that's an example here. A Beacon Warlord. Yeah, so merchants obviously aren't good to fight. Miners, not the best. And Diplomat is terrible. So maybe we will win this one. I don't know. Kane says, I just got Crown of the Oathbreaker. I'm not sure what that is. Is that a RPG, like a computer game? or? All right, now to explain some of these attributes here, this is physical health, the peach color. So you can see that pixie only has 12. You can think of it as hit points, 12 hit points, compared to the troll wizard having 444. Uh, this Badgerling Thief has 157, Elf Samurai has 81, Redkin Knight 90, and Dwarf Druid 119. Now, this is your respiratory system health, the uh, kind of darker blue color. So 57 on the Pixie, 126 on the Wizard. So they all look like fairly average, close to human respiratory system health except the pixie's low this light blue color is mental health the pixie has 373 so extremely powerful mentally psionics wouldn't do much to this pixie but look at the troll only 48 so a psionic could take down this troll super fast Whereas, if we're doing physical damage to him, that's going to be one heck of a fight trying to take him down. Uh, the elf's pretty strong mentally, 183. The dwarf is as well. So yeah, just the troll's really vulnerable there. Uh, red is our circulatory system health. So that's bleeding and things like that. So 57, the pixie's pretty weak. Troll's really strong. It's 368. Elf, 70... Dwarf 131, 
So most mostly pretty average, except the Pixian troll. Toll says respiratory is your breathing, basically. Yes. Um, so if physical health goes to zero, you die. Mental health goes to zero, you fall into a coma, which is the equivalent of death. You'll, you'll never come out of it. And you can just kill the enemy while they're there. Respiratory system reaches zero, you die. Circulatory system reaches zero, you die from a heart attack. Um, nervous system health, if it reaches zero, you get paralyzed. You're permanently paralyzed, which again is pretty much the equivalent of death. This purple number here is mana. That's like your spell points. This pixie is 550 mana. It'd be an absolute beast if it was a spellcaster, but it's a it's a uh, trickster, which doesn't really use mana much, so that's useless. Uh, you can see the troll has zero mana. Can't cast anything, even as a wizard, because he has because he's not smart enough to have any mana. And we have six seconds before combat's going to go in. I could click that to make it go, but we'll just wait for it. Agreed. Blunder. And then we'll take a look at the notes here and see what happens. So it looks like the stamina on this troll got drained. And if we want to look at the specific messages related to this character, we can see what happened. So the elf priest cast tiring on Trolly. So the elf priest were fighting drain some of the troll's stamina. Uh, stamina reaches zero, you fall unconscious. You don't die. And that'll come back over time as you rest. Okay, let's see. Anything else happen? The dwarf druid cast stress. So we cast that on the foxling diplomat. And it did 32 nervous system damage to the diplomat. So again, if, if you get the nervous system down to zero, this diplomat will fall permanently paralyzed, which is equivalent of dead. Unless a priest unparalyzes him and restores nervous system to him. Uh, yeah, stamina is a yellow number. Yep. It, pretty much every action you do will affect stamina, and it'll go down. And as it gets lower and lower, the closer it gets to zero, the more it impacts your performance. So you'll start getting weaker. You'll start uh, being worse with your skills, all that kind of stuff. You won't dodge well. And you can see, uh, in general, they're all pretty good with stamina. The troll actually had the least, because it probably because his endurance is low. Uh -huh. Yeah, he has 80 endurance. So that's why uh, his is lower. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the next round. I don't think anything else happened here. So someone cast distraction on my elf samurai, but he resisted it. Oh, the random, our pixie tried to throw a noise bomb, but fumbled it. Uh, Ogre Miner called for help. Okay. Yeah, let's do the next round. All right, then. Okay. So two of our guys are already dead. Our Badgeline and our Dwarf Druid. Let's see what happened to him. So, wow. So he was trying to attack a Sprite Alchemist who's going to be super fast. Can't hit it. Even with all these attacks, could not touch that thing. Oh, we're fighting a Pixie Assassin. <laughs> So that's probably what killed him. Let's see. No damage, no damage. Here we took, oh yeah, we took eight damage. Oh, the Ogre Miner, he swung a pickaxe made of steel, did 45 damage. 
hit again, 21 damage, 24. So this Ogre Miner just obliterated the Badgerling Thief with his pickaxe. Well, Miners are really good at swinging a pickaxe. <laughs> so that's why I mean, he did so much damage because of his strength, being an Ogre. Just decimated him. And then let's see how this guy died. Looks like he took a bunch of small amounts of damage from the Beacon Warlord. So this Warlord was swinging a Warhammer around. Lots of crush, pierce damage here and there. Yeah, just hit him a bunch of times. Mongoose, their, their agility is so high, they can get so many attacks on. That'll drain his stamina fast, but... Really ambitious to go with six HP bars. I like it, Tulsa's. <laughs> yeah, I want to make it complicated where you can have all kinds of different ways to solve the problem. You know, you can, like, have a psionic take on trolls. And this troll's almost dead, actually. 107 hit points out of 444 left. Let's see who's doing damage to him. The Foxling Diplomat is actually chopping him up. Stabbing him with a dagger. Uh, the troll's so slow. Even though he's got a ton of health, he can't dodge with a darn. He just can't get out of the way, and this foxling is really fast. Just chopping him up. Have we killed any of them? Yes, we have. We killed the elf priest, the null bard. And that's it, I think. All right, then. So tried to hit my knight, but did no damage. You heard that? Heard that. Uh, the knight thrusted the short sword at the mongoosian merchant. Missed. Yeah, good. Good luck with trying to hit that mongoose. The elf's dead. The pixie's dead. So we have two characters left. Not looking good. They keep hitting my knight and not... They're doing some damage, but his armor's blocking a lot of it too. Uh, oh, we actually did just get a glancing blow on that Mongoosian Merchant. Three damage. It's Troll Wizard. I think I'm going to take control of him. I'm going to have him attack. this uh, approach and attack the Beacon Warlord. Swing our quarterstaff. Okay. Yeah, he's definitely going to die. So we swung at it, but missed, of course. Party's adventure has come to an end. Unless you have some friends that can locate the bodies and restore you to normal health. Or send another one of your parties to the rescue. Okay, so we'll delete this party. Delete. Let's create a new one. This time I'll manually create some. Hey, Bo, welcome to the stream. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. A troll killed by a diplomat. Oh, the embarrassment back home, Mr. Jackson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're gonna we're gonna pick some good combinations here. So 
first thing I want to do, let's make really quick. Let's do a Mongoosian. Let's make an assassin. We could change the pictures here. We got all kinds of pictures to pick from if we want to make them look like a, like this. Let's see. Voices. I can't promise anything, but I'll do my best. <laughs> I don't want to make him sarcastic. Let's make him a swindler. How can I help you? <laughs> oh, you're doing good, Bo. Glad to hear that. Okay. So look at this agility, man. That's just crazy. We're going to see how high we can make it. 185. Uh, just for reference, humans, 100 is average. 100 is an average human. 80 is the lowest humans can have on an attribute. 120 is the highest they can have on an attribute. So that kind of gives you a feel for what, what these numbers mean. Uh, we're going to boost confidence. And constitution affects physical health. I'm going to boost that. Uh, vitality will affect some resistances and things too, so I'm going to boost that. Okay. We have 40 skill points to assign. Whichever one we pick here, that's what they're going to start with. Uh, I made it so that, you know, if I pick dart weapons, I'm going to start with darts. I think I'm going to do sword. And then I'll put a little bit in leather. The highest you can have is 40 on a skill in the beginning. I won't let you go over that. And then as you level up, though, you can choose to put points in the skills. And depending on the vocation, they have different caps on different skills. These vulnerability attacks are really nice. They're like critical hits, basically. But this impacts chance to hit and how much damage you're going to do with a sword. So I wanted to dump more than that. Okay. So he'll be a heavy damage dealer. Um, I think I want an alchemist. Let's call him Burns. I'm going to pick an alchemist. Okay. You need my help? I will ensure safety for us and our belongings. <laughs> we'll do conservative. That's a gringo did that voice. Okay, let's see. So intelligence is important. I'm going to boost confidence again. Speed is... Mainly affects movement. Agility is more like macro coordination versus dexterity is kind of like micro. Right, let's put a little bit in logic and a little constitution. Okay, we're going to boost alchemy, inventory. Well, 
I do want him to have a weapon. Let's see. Let's have him use sticks. Okay. Do a priest. <laughs> what does this call him healer? Back we'll do a female. Why a Yakshasa? Synergy A. Yes. Okay. Empathy. That impacts healing and mana and everything on the priest. Wisdom, spirituality. There's confidence. Let's boost that too. Okay. Put some into healing. That gives extra healing. Mm. Take flail weapons. Not worrying about shielding or any of that stuff. Okay. We need some tankier guys too. I want a knight, I think. Either a knight or a paladin. Mark. Ah. Do a human. And I think I'm going to do a night. Honorable. By my honor, I promise to do my best. Okay. Let's boost some agility. Confidence. It's time to get with pole arms. Male armor. Okay. So I think I have, let's see, one, two, three, four. So we need two more. You don't have to have six, but I definitely want six. What other vocation? Kind of want to mess around with an evoker. They'll have some summons right off the bat. Like really weak summons, but. It'll be kind of fun. I'm going to call him Caller. <laughs> we do female. Let's see. I'm far too busy for this, or am I? <laughs> Bose says, what a lame voice actor on the night. That's Bo's voice. <laughs> he did the honorable voice. <laughs> That's not lame at all. You did a great job, Bo. <laughs> okay, let's see here. So, empathy, spirituality, charisma, let's boost those. 
That's good. 140 points you get to use per night because they don't have any points already pre-assigned. Use staves. So they can only go up to 20 on staff. Let's see. Let's, I think that's going to matter much. Split these. Okay. One more party member. Let's do a ninja. Halfling. I'm ready and able to help. Present. Let's do sarcastic. That'll be fun. Okay. All right. Fifty points to assign. Let's have him use unarmed combat. I can show that. Uh, dodging. There we go. Okay, we're ready. Enter the arena. Let's see if this party does any better. So we're fighting Null Shaman, Foxling Monk, a Batkin Aristocrat, Pixie Ranger, Human Sorcerer, and Mana Samurai. Man, this is going to be hard. This is going to be really hard. But our party is a lot better. So let, let's let the computer take control and see how it does. Oh, if you say so. Here we go. Looks like we've killed two of them already. Our evoker summoned a huge rat. Let's see here. So now we have this extra party member. So our priest is irritated. Hello. Three minute duration on that. Let's see. I think we've already killed. We killed the Foxling Monk and the Pixie Ranger. I'm looking to see if anybody's taken any real damage here. I don't think anybody's taken any damage yet. No, nothing. The alchemist has already used up a bunch of mana. What did he do? Oh, someone drained him of 40 mana. The sorcerer cast mana drain, that's why. Burns isn't skilled enough to create a healing potion. He's trying, he's trying to get, create a healing potion in the middle of combat. Oh, that's just... That's a bad move. Now let's see. He cast. Oh, he killed the uh, ranger though. Pixie ranger. He cast acid arrow on him, and he's dead. But unless someone else already killed him, somebody else kill it. Pixie ranger takes sixteen da acid damage. Yeah, the that killed it. 
pixie one acid arrow took down that pixie ranger it's health so low mr spock said is the ai pretty good at fighting on their own yes i have i have made them uh quite optimized but as i was saying earlier it it uses the intelligence wisdom logic of that creature to make good decisions so if you have like a troll fighter they're just going to act kind of erratic they're not going to put in much thought into who to target or what to do they're just going to kind of go berserk but if you use uh like a smart elf fighter they'll they'll know oh that mage i can take him down real quick and kind of be more targeted Bo says, I've never used a summon. Didn't know you could direct them. Yes, you can. Uh, the evokers can. They're the only ones that have the ability to control their summons. In fact, um, they can get multiple summons and they're permanent. Uh, unlike other summons that generally, they, after five minutes, they disappear. Uh, but it's based on the level of your character. So an evoker could... If you're like level 10, you could summon either a bunch of lower level or you could summon like a more powerful one or two creature. Okay, next round. Okay. Somebody's slowed. The night? No, it's weakened. That was probably the sorcerer that did that. Man, Mark just decimated that null shaman. Uh, yeah, the sorcerer has weakness. So if we look now, his strength is uh, 70 now instead of 100. And, oh, our priest is dead. What happened to him? The Manus Samurai. That's the one I was worried about. Those Manuses are brutal. They just chopped him up. The healer, before he died, though, cast Tiring on the Foxling Monk. Okay, now we can use our Divine Favor. Each character, most characters start with one Divine Favor. Humans, because of their kind of having, being weaker, uh, compared to some of the other races, they get two divine favor. So we're going to use one of these. And basically it's um, the, it's divine intervention from the gods. And like I said, it's a permanent loss. It goes away once you use it, but every character starts with one. So we're going to bring back healer. Remove all negative conditions. Oh, thank, thank you, you so much. So she's back, full health. Everything gone. But now she doesn't have any more. Ah, we'll see you later, Higher Ground Gaming. Uh, he's streaming tonight at 10, by the way, guys, if you want to check him out on Twitch. Hey, Boxy, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Boxy says, seeing this game makes me want to play at ASAP. Well, if you really are serious about that and you want to help, if you want to do some testing, Boxy, in the arena, I can set you up with an account. I had shut down everybody's account uh, that had done testing for me, um, but I could open it up to you if you want to send me a message like over on Discord. Just tell me what you want your login ID and password to be. You can go in and play test. Okay, let's see. The assassin's almost dead. See, now normally what I would do, in fact, I'm probably going to do it now. I'm going to uh, disable computer control on the priest. And we're going to heal minor wounds, power level 2 on the swift. Definitely. Let's see. Anything else need to be done?
That mana samurai is right here. Okay. We'll let the computer try to do its best besides that. Ah. Oh, the assassin got killed before I could heal him. <laughs> he got destroyed. Okay. Turn back on computer control then. Yeah, sure thing, Boxy. Let's bring him back. Use our divine favor. Swift. Okay. Here we go. Hey, we got level ups. Swift gained a level. Shadow, caller, mark, healer, burns. So the mana samurai died. So we could actually go in and level up now. How goes it, buddy? You can see we're level two, level up pending one. So you can either increase one attribute by one, which lowers your this five points down by four, and then you get one skill boost, or we could raise skills by up to five. So I think I think I'm gonna do sword weapons here. Increase to sword weapons, burns. Hello. Be able to get a new spell too, because he's an alchemist. Let's look on his alchemy. So here's the spell choices we have: corrosion resistance, poison dart, poison resistance, or respiratory system force resistance. Let's go offensive. Do poison dart. Hello there. Did it give it to him. Yeah, it's a bug. Just found a bug. There we go. It thought I hadn't applied five points. It said did not level up because there were some unused points. I'll try again, but I thought I put all five points in there. It's a bug. Okay, mark. Arms. Hi. Our healer. Cure bleeding, cure blindness, cure poison, raise your cloak, remove silence. Cure poison. Evoke. Well, hello there. Evoking. Ah, she didn't have a spell that she could learn because um, they must be higher mana, minimum mana than what she could use. She must get one next next level then. What can we have? What's Shadow up? Ninja. Let's make him. His unarmed combat must be maxed out because I can't choose it anymore. Touching. Okay. I, we still haven't killed them all. There's still something alive here. What is it? It's a sorcerer. It didn't work. <laughs> Burns tried to do something and he failed. He's like, it didn't work. Oh. He's creating a potion. You hear it? Right there. He's creating a potion using Hazel Rig's healing potion ritual. So you're going to hear some grinding and stuff in the background. Okay, let's look for treasure. Flanged flail. Jug of water. 
Wakazashi male boots, mithril male boots, short sword, flange flail wand, fishing cane, and a bergonet steel. I don't have an icon for that. So all this went into our party inventory, so um, we can put it on. Let's see, who wants to wear the mithril boots? Let's give it to our ninja. Just type mithril, filter it down, select equip. So it's currently overlapped with his Jikatabi leather. Uh, body locations, foot, lower leg, and toe. That's what this is going to cover. 50,000 structure points. Hardness, 400. That's extreme. So if he gets hit on the feet, he's not going to be taking much damage, if any. Okay, so he equipped those. Let's see, did it I impact the speed? It did. Lowered it by 11. That's okay. That's worth it. Bo says, now for my greatest trick. Please hold on while I make this potion for five minutes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So for those that, that are new to this and, and hasn't haven't heard my explanations of this game. My original intent on this game was to make it where you could play it and log out and be still logged in while your characters do things. So like in the morning before you get to work, bring up a, bring it up on your phone and say, hey, I want to start crafting a potion. And then you do a safe logout, or I'm sorry, a virtual logout. Like this. What that means is in the game, your, your characters are still there. So, you know, if you're not in a safe place, monsters could come along and fight and attack you. And as long as you had computer control turned on, you'd fight back. But if you didn't, you know, they just massacre you. If you're in an inn where it's safe or something, then you could, you know, sit there and be safe the whole time. And when you get to work, log back in, and maybe you have created a potion or two by then. So, because this server runs, you know, 24-7. So, that was the intent. So, then I also wanted to make it where you didn't have to wait on things. And so, I introduced this concept called uh, time dilation. Which I don't think I have that in the... don't think I have it in the arena. But anyway, with that, what you can do is age your characters artificially in order to like accelerate time. So if I say for burns, let's say I wanted to walk 10 miles in the game. You can say, here's where I want to go. Now do time dilation and you'll get there instantly, but it'll age your characters artificially oh. by kind of an extreme amount. So like, where's our age? Uh, you can see here it's extremely sensitive with how old you are. You know, it's just a giant decimal number. So, like, that might age you a month, even though it would have only taken you a day to get there. So you can, uh, and I kind of got that concept, not the time dilation, but the use an age based on, like, dark lands. In dark lands, you can, uh, age is a big factor. And in most games, age doesn't mean anything. So it's kind of a commodity you can use in the game to... Get instant gratification and perform actions right then and there, but at the sacrifice of artificially aging your characters. And they will start to have issues as they get older. Attributes will go down. And then eventually you'll get to a point where they're so old they'll just die. And you can bring them back, but it'll only last so long, maybe a, a day or two, and then you find your characters dead again. So... Uh, it really makes you think about how you want to play the game. Mr. Spock says, do the character age? age. Uh, oh, I guess you just answered that. Yes, they do. And some races um, have different age limits, like this, like a rat. 
a rat can only live to be so old, and then it it's dead. And you try to bring it back, it'll just keep dying. I am unable. Oh, he must have just tried to do something else. <laughs> Burr's just tried to uh, use Hazel Rig's healing potion ritual again, and he, and he failed. He's like, I am unable. Now, the reason why he's doing that is because I have uh, skill auto use enabled. By default, it's enabled on everything. So the computer, if you're just sitting there, the computer will, as long as you're not in danger, it'll try to do something if you have something useful to do. And now he's trying to create another one. But you can disable that so the computer doesn't try to do that stuff. I think I have an auto heal too. And what is that? I either have it in the main game or I have an option for priests. I don't remember where I did that. Green. Maybe I haven't plugged it into the menu yet. But yeah, like if you have someone that can cast healing spells, you could just click a button, they'll find the most injured person and start helping them. Mr. Spock says, any age reversal spells, not permanent, no. I did not want to make it where you could rejuvenate and, and reduce age because then that'd be a massive cheat and you'd, you wouldn't have to think about using time dilation. Now there is a spell that will uh, temporarily prevent the uh, effects of aging. So if you cast that, and I don't remember who gets that spell, probably either a priest, a shaman, or a sorcerer, uh, that will hold off those bad age effects if you have an old character. And then there, there's also a spell called Permanency that you can cast on a buff-type spell. So you could have that with combination. So somebody could cast the age side effect thing and then cast permanency on top of it and then um you won't have those age effects mine is death you will have the death thing that can still happen randomly but like your strength loss and all that stuff you could kind of permanently disable that but no i, I don't want to make it where you can reverse age uh, but the other thing i guess i'll mention i'm just throwing all this out there i added what did I call it? Karma points, where if you delete a party because the whole party has died, you get karma points that you can then take and apply to the next party you create. So, it, it, you know, you don't have to be so distraught if a party permanently dies and you spent time on it. I mean, you can always still get that party back if you can find someone to help you and re resurrect and all that stuff. But uh, otherwise, if you delete the party, those those points will go toward the new characters you create, and you can boost them higher than normal. Bo says, I need that spell in real life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, let's see here. What is that? Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Mark's weakness just wore off. Mark is no longer weakened. So that's probably from a sorcerer. <laughs> Baby mode <laughs> engaged. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else I could show. As you can see, that rat's still alive. Didn't die. Just surprising considering it only has 18 hit points. Uh, oh, we'll go to the shop. That's what we'll do. So I picked up all the items. Let's exit and go into the Springfield shop. I made this just for the arena so that when you're done, you can uh, sell your stuff or buy stuff or whatever. So here's what we have that we could try to sell. 
and it shows if it's party inventory in green so that means a, a person doesn't have it in their own inventory how much copper you'll get for it so i'm just going to sell some of the stuff we found Leather pants, I actually might put those on. Size factor 0.75, okay. Keep the water. Long sword, that's equipped. So this, this, this I actually want to equip too. Minus 10 perception, oratory, and spell casting. Yeah, and that's the other thing. Any spellcaster, any vocation can wear anything as long as it'll fit uh, but there'll be penalties for example if you wear anything metal it uh, impacts spell casting or if you're wearing a helm it'll impact your perception or door things like that okay so let's sell this stuff so we have 2600 copper let's see what the store is selling Acid bomb, some berries, cloth cloak made of wool, cloth robe made of wool, steel dagger, dust of appearance, flanged foil bronze, flash bomb, toxication powder, a lamp of minor freeze resistance. That's very situational. Male quaff of copper, a noise bomb, and some potions of curing. Here's a pretty good healing potion. One charge. Hang on a second, guys. Let me let my dog out real quick.
Okay, guys, I am back. So, let's see here. Bo, I'm not sure if you're still on here, but if you are, he says, I'm not sure if I asked you this, did you make the items randomly generated or did you program each one? Uh, are you asking about, like, in the shop? I have, for this shop, I have a set number of items from these potions and then like some of the daggers and things are set. And then I add in a few random ones as well. And then the, the shop recycles its item list every, I don't know, every so often. And if someone in game sells to the shop, other players can see it. So like if I fight something and I, I find a mithril sword or something and I sell it to the shop and you're logged in, you could then buy it. Uh, but as far as generating the items that the monsters drop and stuff, um, it's usually based on what their character classes are and their skills. So if, if one of the monsters you're fighting randomly has good sword skill and then it assigns a longsword to them, then that's probably what they're going to drop. However, based on their level... I also put in extra random things. So the higher the level, the more powerful potential items they could drop. And it's completely randomized based on cost. Uh, I have a formula that I use. All kinds of things factor into the formula, but uh, it, it determines the price of the item based on that stuff. And so... Like if it's a level five monster, it'll drop an item the equivalent of 1500 gold and I can specify what types of items within that, I shouldn't say gold, copper, within that copper range. So like uh, alchemists may be more likely to drop potions and salves and things like that. Uh, a knight may be more likely to drop weapons and then I can uh, set the range of items out of i think i have like over a million possible random combinations but based on the cost price and the type it might limit that from the 1 million down to 300 options and for that particular night so that that's how that works yeah it's a i have a ridiculous number of randomly generated items that can happen uh, the interesting thing, though, about price is sometimes the price of something is affected based on what it's made out of, not necessarily the magic properties or how good it is. Like, like if you found a gold dagger, gold is actually weak. Like, it has low hardness. Let's see if I can find a weapon here. Here's a steel, steel dagger. So the, the hardness of steel is 130. I don't know what gold is, but it may only be like 20. It, it's not hard. But the cost of that would be through the roof because it's made of gold. So sometimes if you find something that's expensive, it's just because what it's made out of it isn't necessarily because it's you know, like a acidic dagger or something like that. Okay, anything else interesting? Let's see if there's any magical things here. Um, this is all for Kieran. Scroll of Static Discharge. It's only seven copper, so it's dirt cheap. But only, it only has one charge and only scribes can use magic scrolls. So since it's very situational, uh, um, it's only worth seven copper. But this would be cool. You know, if you had a scribe, you'd pick this up for next to nothing. And it does 21 to 26 damage, 10 feet away, electric to a single life form. Leather sling. So that's about it. I'll buy that potion. And, um, you know, I've made this where I can interact with the players 
while they're actually playing. So like I can uh, I put in options where I could like give something to someone you know, like divine intervention i could kill something if i wanted to i could suddenly spawn monsters in some place so think of it as like that dungeons and dragons cartoon from the 80s where that little dungeon master suddenly appears i could do that kind of thing <laughs> while people are playing including the shop i could put things in here i could take things away recycle them. Bo says, heavy and soft, best armor. <laughs> well, the thing is, sometimes, depending on what you're fighting, like, cloth armor would be better. You know, like, if you're fighting something that's going to do electric damage, you don't want to be wearing metal. You'll, you'll take extra damage from that. Uh, likewise, cold. Like, normal armor may not protect from cold. But if you're wearing fur or padded armor, it might do it. In fact, I can probably show that. Uh, where is the... How do I get to that list? Why do I have it on here? Let's see. On the website, you can look at um, unmagical stuff. I did not want to put magical stuff on here. So if we look at this armor list... This is a list of all the armor that that's normal and like here this is steel you can see what it does this is how much it absorbs from these types of things so it does absorb a little bit of frost but no cold now let's look for fur look how much fur protects us from cold 15 to 30 damage same with frost and freeze protects a little from electric so sometimes having you know something that's softer may actually be an advantage depending on what you're fighting uh, here we can see these fur pants reduce agility speed and dodging by five hardwoods worse even spell casting there If we look up plated, oops, that happened. Plated. Minus 20. So that's just for the one thing on your, your arms here. The bracers, you'd be losing 20. And then if you put on something else, let's see, brassards, you'd lose another 20. So eventually you get to a point where you'd not be able to cast at all unless you're extremely skilled maybe you could pull it off but you could do it if you want to mr spock says great cartoon about the D, D. yeah i love that cartoon what else can i talk about real quick uh the spell list so on the website here, you can see every spell. You can see how many there are. See how slow the scroll bar is going. Hundreds of spells. Just pick some of those freeze, maybe. So Spectre Touch, this is an interesting spell. The ne Necromancy School. Costs 15 mana, and... It has four effects. It does cold damage, frost, freeze, and magic. And this is how much it does for each of those. That does nervous system damage. And then the other three do physical. So like if um, someone was resistant to cold and frost they could still take the freeze and magic damage spell damage screen that protects you from all kinds of stuff spiked carapace this is a fun spell it's a voodoo magic realm so this does what's called a melee defense pierce damage so if you cast that on someone and someone hits you with melee damage 
this is how much they're going to take back. They're going to take 30 to 37 pierce damage back at them. Your last five minutes. Uh, some of them, I've been putting in descriptions on spells, like a generic description. Some of them have them. Most don't, because it takes me a lot of time to do this. But this is kind of the generic explanation for the Spike Tendril spell. Uh, this has what's called an enduring duration of one minute. And so this will continually do five to six physical damage every, it's probably every five seconds for a minute uh, to the target life form. So each time they would try to resist if they had pierce damage resistance, which most things don't. Spiritual hammer just creates an item for you to use for five minutes. This this is an interesting spell. It's a ne uh, necromancy school. So if a target's spirituality attribute reaches zero, they get they can get possessed. Because uh, in this universe, there's different dimensions and the ethereal plane is where there's spirits waiting that don't have bodies and they're waiting to get into a body and so when spirituality reaches zero uh, essentially your soul gone in that body and you lose control of that body and so then it can become possessed and then uh even though it's still alive the body's there physically and everything now that other spirit takes over and it's almost always malicious so then your possessed party member will it's kind of like bard steel it'll attack you know your nearest party members and stuff unless you can somehow you know banish that spirit out of the body and get get your spirituality back Let's see stamina health this just takes whatever stamina you the uh caster has and converts 50 percent drains whatever it is 50 percent of it and gives it in healing to the target these are just straight damage and although this one hits a 10-foot area oh this is a fun voodoo spell stitch so it can cure dismemberment so if you get an arm chopped off or something, or you're decapitated, it can cure that or it can cure, cure bleeding. So it's a high level spell, but it, it allows a uh, limb to be put back on. <laughs> Mr. Spock's possession, fun, yeah. And most things don't have high spirituality. So like, you know, you're fighting a troll or something that's low spirituality, and that did, what did it do? A, eight to, 10 basically spiritual damage per power level. So if you cast power level 5, you could potentially drain 50 of the spirituality on that. That troll would not be able to handle that. It would, its spirituality would be zero and the troll would get possessed. And then it would just, the computer takes over. So you can never control a possessed directly. The computer always controls possessed. So then it would turn over and, and the troll would just start attacking anything friendly to it. You're summoning a stone golem for 10 minutes. That's the wizardry realm. Stone to water, you can convert any stone to water. And that'll be um, probably mainly used in the game. So you go to an area where there's a stone wall or something. You can disintegrate stone wall and create water if you need water. But it would also work on like uh, stone elementals or things made of stone. To cause severe damage to him. Uh, removes petrification. Strength. So thaumaturgists uh, get a lot of buffing type spells. And this is one of them. Strength. Increase strength by 25 points. And we saw this one tonight. Druid cast stress. Did nervous system damage. We did not see stun. 
So that can paralyze for 10 seconds per power level. And the uh, target gets a 25% chance to resist on top of their normal resistance. Your stupidity, that's a size spell. Does a lot of decrease on intelligence related stuff. And remember, that will impact how the computer controls. It'll make the computer's AI be a lot dumber. Suffocate does. Uh, think of it as poison for the respiratory system. It just does damage to it over time. For five minutes. Hmm. I'm in carriage. In case you need a carriage to take you somewhere. Here we can summon a dancing sword, a dark elf, dinosaur. This is a hundred mana though. So you'd have to be really, really high level to be able to get that spell. It's an evoker spell. Ethereal Panther. So most of these summons are probably going to be evoking, although that, this is necromancy summon ghouls but you'll notice theirs is only 10 minutes versus the permanent of evokers let's see summons what is this one oh supernatural help voodoo so it increases your physical health maximum by 50 and it lasts for an hour so that would be fantastic to cast like on a pixie only had 15 hit points and for an hour give it 65 super shield that's geomancy uh, that boosts the shield skill by 50 points for the life form for five minutes. Swirling Iron Shards. That's a Geomancer spell. Last 20 seconds. Um, but the enduring duration after it's there is for two minutes. So they sit there swirling. 20 foot area so it'll do one point of damage every round for everything in that area for two minutes swirling skulls necromancy it spins these things around for five minutes at a life form and it does 15 to 18 damage physical uh, for that whole time so that it that would be so fun to cast on something that does crush damage. Something's running away for five minutes and it's these swirling skulls just crashing into it, doing 15, 18 damage every like five seconds. Now, if you had enough armor, you know, that wouldn't you would take zero damage because that wouldn't be enough to get through. But if you're not armored, that that would definitely kill you. What is this one? Synchronized strategy. So, Divinity Realm, it's an attribute modifier. Why do I have Accelerate here? Okay, okay. So the effect is acceleration, which I believe is for speed or initiative. I'm not sure which one. It might be initiative. So basically it's going to, yeah, oh yeah, it says right here. So that's going to increase your initiative by 50 points for five minutes on the life form. Uh, what else we got? A tar ball. This is an interesting spell. So, geomancy 
it has all kinds of effects. It does burn, so that does physical damage every second. It slows the target, which decreases dexterity, agility, and speed by 30 to 40 points in this last five minutes. And that's per power level, so that's an interesting spell. Here's a Psy spell, Telkinesis, where you can just move things with your mind. Wizardry, Teleport, you can go up to half a mile. And a party of ten. Uh, what does this do? Terrestrial form. Oh! So this can convert someone that's in ethereal form. So like a spirit or something like that. They have permanent ethereal form. You can convert them to terrestrial. So they will lo essentially lose the ethereal status. So you would take a spirit that's in the ethereal realm, boom, and you bring them here. And then you could actually physically hit them. Terrifying Choir, Necromancy. It does fear to 20 life forms for one minute. Tether item. This, <laughs> this is a really fun one. So, it's voodoo, and what it does is you can make an item permanently tethered to that equipped to that life form and they they will not get rid of it so no matter how that you try to get rid of it from them they they will just not release it and that that would be like a fun prank or um you get a cursed item a lot of times the cursed item will have this tether effect on it but you could actually cast it yourself too if you're a shaman with the voodoo skill. Thorns, it just does physical ground damage. So this is a physical ground damage zone. You place it wherever you want it, up to 50 feet away. 20 foot area, last 30 seconds. Anything stepping there takes three damage uh, per second while it's standing there. Now if you had armor on your feet that does more protection than this, then it takes zero damage. Tidal Wave, this is a really strong spell. 15% uh, chance to knock you out. It hits a 50-foot area. 20-second duration if it knocks you out. Uh, crush damage for 50-foot area is 35 to 75. And then it also causes respiratory system damage, uh, 30 to 100. So... You're drowning, basically. And uh, that can kill you there, too. So that's a good combo. We saw this one tonight. Drain Stamina. Titanic Power. Thaumaturgist can cast this. Increases strength by 250. Oh, actually, it sets it to 250. So even if you had 10 strength, boom, you get 250 strength. If you had 150 strength already, it just sets it to 250. So you'd gain 100. Lasts five minutes. Toxic spores. This is Evoker. Does suffocation. Yeah, suffocation. So respiratory system damage for a minute. Uh, two points per round here's uncurse unnatural regeneration that allows you to regenerate your physical health quicker vampiric drain necromancer so this does circulatory system health transferring so it takes this much circulatory system help from one target and gives it back to the caster. 
So that would almost certainly kill whatever you're using it on, unless unless they have high uh, vitality. Volcanic eruption, man, that's a really strong spell too. Thirty foot area. It's a druid spell, water to food. And I've made it where um, all realms have about the same number of spells. So it's balanced as far as that goes. Sorcery weakness. We saw that tonight. Here's enchantment realm. Web. Does a, a body restraint for a minute. Whirlwind from druids. Does crush and pierce damage in a pretty good area. 25 foot. Will-O-Wisp Radiance it does all kinds of stuff. Heals, removes stuff, cures. Wind of Decay starts decay effect on you. 30 foot area. X-ray vision. Zone of Limited Protection. This is a priest spell. So gives us a resistance boost to all of these. And it affects 10 life forms for one minute. So, if you're interested in any of these spells, go out there and check them out. I'm sure I'm going to make more too, but that's what I got so far. So, anyway, guys, uh, if you want to test and you actually want to play in the arena, go to Discord and send me a private message. I'll set you up with an account. If you want to volunteer to do voice acting, to have your voice permanently included in the game for others to have fun and experience, let me know. Message me. Uh, so hopefully you enjoyed this. So thanks for the chat, guys. I'll see you next time.